her now so please give her a big uh, app promotion summit welcome to the virtual stage thank you james uh yeah i'm really happy to be here um like james said i practically started my public speaking career with aps uh i remember being really nervous for my first presentation but um yeah now uh, four years later i am uh, in love with it and I'm really happy to be uh, speaking with everyone today because I've never uh, actually participated in the USA edition before. Um, and uh, in today's talk, I'm going to share with you how you can grow your app uh, by leveraging content marketing. So uh, since most of you here might not know me, I'll just give a bit quick background. Uh, I am the paid content marketing lead at Blinkist. So this is an app that's based in Berlin that offers 15 minute explainers to nonfiction books. Uh, so for example, if you wanna read a book like The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, um, which is a, a very thick read, uh, this could take you weeks or maybe even months. And if you don't have the time, you can check out our, the explainer on Blinkist instead and just see if this book is for you. Uh, and likewise, you can do this for 3000 titles um, and exclusively in nonfiction. Uh, I am also the founder of the, the Art of Content Marketing, which is a copywriting course that I just launched last month. Uh, and some other information about me is that I've got five years of experience using content marketing specifically for user acquisition, uh, and mostly uh, through just scaling up Outbrain and Taboola, uh, which I've done for both Blinkist and also AFIT, which is another app that's based in Berlin. Uh, and they're a, a fitness app, basically. All right, so um, just to kind of uh, give a bit of a background on what content marketing is, because this term gets thrown around quite a lot. Um, and in, this, in the context of app promotion, I'm specifically referring to when you use a signup flow, where you redirect traffic to an article before sending uh, people directly to the app store. Um, and actually what I'm, um, what I'm seeing more and more uh, especially this one last year, is that for a lot of apps, this is becoming the norm. It's actually replacing the app store flow as uh, the most reliable um, campaign setup. And I think I think a lot of apps uh, might be experiencing the same thing, same thing that we are, which is that uh, app store campaigns are becoming more and more difficult to scale due to many reasons. Um, but we're seeing that we're able to spend increasingly more and more on content marketing versus app store ads. Um, and the reason that this, uh, the content marketing even became a thing in user acquisition is because of the rise of Outbrain and Taboola. Um, so these are the two biggest native advertising channels. Uh, they're actually going to merge at the end of the year. And when that happens, they're going to become the third largest ad network after Facebook and Google. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar with Outbrain and Taboola, um, I'll, I'll explain what that is now. Uh, so basically these channels work with uh, online news websites um, and actually like basically the, like anyone you can think of, they work with like over 20,000 uh, different news websites. So wherever you get your news from, uh, most likely they work with Outbrain and Taboola. Uh, if you just want some examples, like uh, their biggest partners are CNN, BBC, The Guardian, New York Times, Business Insider. And in fact, I, uh, on, the, on the right, you can see a screenshot of how their ad looks like. Uh, their ads always come at the bottom of every article uh, and it's, it's going to be under a header that says paid content or from around the world or you may like. Um, and the reason it's called native advertising is because um, it doesn't really look like an ad uh, and people don't even perceive it as an ad. Uh, they see it as a part of the reading experience, uh, which, is, which is why a lot of people um, have decided to um, to tackle this with content marketing. Uh, but the scale here is really vast uh, and it's not just being named for the third, as the, the third biggest ad network for nothing. Uh, I can kind of put it in perspective. Uh, if you like to work with Facebook and Instagram because it gives you everyone who's active on social media, then um, Outbrain and Tabula gives you everyone who is reading the news online. Uh, so for that reason, um, these channels are really important to tackle. And I'll give you an example of how uh, we made this work 
at Blinkist. So in the first screen, you see an ad that's on Business Insider. Um, it, so like the, the first one you see here is an, is an ad from us. If you click on that, you will go to our magazine uh, and our magazine would have call to actions um, prompting people to go to the app store and download. Um, and like initially, I think a lot of companies would be starting content marketing uh, for Outbrain and Tabula, but what they're finding is that actually this works really well on other channels as well, and especially social media channels. Um, and actually it's really working out well in our favor because um, as we're seeing that, okay, like during certain periods, like for example, during Christmas, when app install campaigns are just impossible to scale on Facebook, uh, we, we find that we can actually fall back on content marketing, which, which will save the day in the end. Um, so like our campaigns are not, uh, are not nearly as volatile as it was before when it was just app install campaigns. Uh, and kind of just to show you like the, the evolution of content marketing on social media channels at uh, Blinkist, in 2018, we were spending only 8% of our budget on Facebook on content marketing. Uh, and the rest of it was just on app install ads, like almost everyone else, uh, almost every other app that I can think of. Uh, and then in 2019, we managed to scale that up to 25%. And in 2020, we scaled that up to 50%. And we're only seeing this trend go up. So uh, we're very happy that we got into uh, content marketing and not only has it been able to uh, scale up Outbrain and Tabula, it's also benefiting a lot of our other channels. Um, and another reason I would recommend uh, doing content marketing is because it upsells the leads. So I think a lot of you might be wondering at this point, like why are you, why are you proud of the extra step in the funnel? Uh, because this is actually an opportunity for you to lose people. Um, which is true. Yeah, we might actually lose people, but those people who end up staying, uh, they will have read, like, let's say, like 800 words about your app, and they're going to be a lot more convinced about it. And this also translates into the metrics. So in this table, you can see that um, the extra step in the funnel uh, would maybe it would cost you like 10% in terms of sign up rate, but because these people are a lot more convinced they're going to be around like 20% more likely to purchase. Uh, and this also shows in lifetime value. Um, so if someone is a lot more convinced about your app because they, they read a whole page about it, uh, they are probably more likely to go with the more expensive membership option as well. Uh, and they're also less likely to cancel and more likely to renew. Um, so yeah, like that initial, um, that in initial sign up rate cost uh, really gets balanced out uh, later on. Um, also with content marketing, uh, it kind of gives you really creative ways to talk about your product. Um, so I put like a very simple comparison here, but uh, with app install campaigns, it, it, you really can't get too creative. You, you might have like carousels or, or video ads or banner ads, but like in the end, the message is really just download this fitness app. Uh, whereas if you wanted to go with content marketing, you can talk about so many things like, uh, for example, you can talk about um, the moment that the founders decided to uh, develop the app. Like one, like for example, if we're just talking about fitness apps, uh, for example, like, uh, we can have an article that just says like founders shared a moment that they decided to take on gyms or how, like which group of people your app is actually benefiting. Like maybe a fitness app is really good for moms everywhere. Um, or you can talk about uh, success stories, so, like just share like uh, five st success stories of how people have um, benefited from using your app. Um, so yeah, like this is this really allows you to um, cast a much broader net. So you're not just targeting people who might be interested in your app description. Um, okay, I something just popped up. Are you currently using content as an app marketing channel? Whoa, actually a lot more than I thought, 20, 20 something percent. Great. Um, yeah. So like, I think just think of it this way, like uh, content marketing allows you to go after people who wouldn't normally be interested in your app, but you will convince them through other ways. All right. So I'm hoping that by the end of this presentation, I will convince the 60% of you who are, or actually more than that, who um, are not using content marketing yet to start. All right, and, oh, 78 people voted, nice. Okay, so, um, I, 
I will share this result. Let's see what happens. Um, or I'm not really <laughs> that familiar with uh, Zoom. Oh, okay, let's move on. Um, so uh, I mentioned I really would like more apps to actually consider this because uh, as, a as an avid content marketer, I think it could be the future of app promotion, but it's not for everyone, not for everyone yet. And I have a checklist um, to, for you to, like, to maybe just consider before you jump right into this. So from a user acquisition perspective, um, I would say that you should never pursue content marketing if you have not uh, completely exhausted Facebook, especially Facebook app and sell ads. Uh, because at least like in my experience as um, a UA person in like working for an app, that should be, that should be your number one priority. Um, you should be able to uh, fully scale Facebook before you pursue something like content marketing, which is uh, a lot more complicated. As well, it, um, it really only makes sense if you're looking at conversions further down the funnel that isn't just install. Um, so it really it really pays off if it, if you're looking at like a like a purchase uh, metric or like ROI, for example, which is uh, what we work with uh, at Blinkist. But let's say your your main metric is just CPI. This funnel does not make sense because that extra step is only going to cost you. You're not going to be able to see the payoffs later on. Um, you should have the capabilities of creating a nice looking blog, uh, which is very important. Uh, you need to come off as, uh, as having authority. Uh, but at the same time, you also, you also need to be able to uh, modify or upload pages on your own. You, don't, you shouldn't have to go through a team um, and wait like a month to upload a page. This is this will be way too slow for you to uh, test content marketing. Um, and also preferably you should have someone on the team that has PR experience because content marketing is really just PR. Uh, but it, like I guess it's more like a marriage of uh, between PR and user acquisition. And then lastly, you should set aside like 50K for testing for this. Um, and I do have to warn you, you need to manage your expectations well. This is going to be a long-term commitment. It's going to pay off big, but you're probably not going to see any results within the first half of the year. Um, and actually, I think, you know, there could be so many great things you could say about your app, but it would take you a lot of testing to get right um, to fig and just like to figure out what people want to hear about your app. Um, and if you're just specifically interested in working with Outbrain and Tabula, this could take anywhere between two weeks to, two, to six months to scale up. And actually it took us six months at Blinkist. Uh, it was a very dark period, but uh, that was four years ago. And I'm really happy that we went through that dark period because we are seeing um, it pay off so much right now. Um, but even if you get it working for Albert and Tablet, it doesn't mean that you can just automatically use it for other channels. This could take you a few more months um, uh, to be able to adapt it to different channels as well. So this is not going to be an overnight success. Um, but if you are interested in trying this anyway, or just hearing what I have to say uh, on how to, how to uh, be successful, um, then I have some tips for you. So uh, the most important thing with content marketing, um, as it's, although it seems kind of obvious, uh, a lot of people don't actually realize it, is that you need to really get your content right. So you need, to, you need to come up with a few articles around your app that isn't your Facebook creative, because that isn't going to work. Uh, you need to just branch out and think of anything that um, might interest people. It could be PR announcements, it could be uh, a success story, uh, or just a, a popular use case that you want more people to know about. But this is the most important part. It isn't that uh, your, your effort shouldn't go into all the time like you do on um, some other channels uh, but it should be on making sure that you have the best angle going in um, and also once you have um, once you have any con content um, already written uh, you want to think about setting up the, the article flow um, specifically with just like building a magazine but if you don't have resources to come up with a magazine I know at AFIT um, we we didn't develop a magazine to start with. We, we created a page that looked like it was a part of a magazine and that was enough. Um, but yeah, like you just, uh, you come up with something that looks uh, 
looks like it resembles um, a magazine. Um, and then you put, you include that into your usual sign up flow, and then you just make sure that you get your tracking rate and just QA the hell out of it to make sure that everything will work fine at the end. Um, and once you have that, then you can think about uh, launching campaigns. Um, I would say like in terms of which, which channels you should start with, with content marketing, um, Outbrain and Taboola definitely would be a good idea, but only if you have resources on your uh, user acquisition team. So if everyone is already like very maxed out, uh, you probably don't want to launch any new channels at this point. Uh, and I would just go with an existing channel. Facebook makes the most sense. And I think most of you work with Facebook here. Uh, so you launch your campaigns and um, I would recommend that you don't spend all of your budget at once, but you just like maybe run it for a week and then take it offline, look at some numbers uh, and see where your bottlenecks are. And I can give you some ideas. So if you look at, if it looks like your CTR isn't that great, then like I mentioned before, you want to make sure that uh, you want to make sure that you have the best content. So it could mean that maybe you just don't have a content angle that is interesting enough for people. Um, so you keep exper experimenting with that, or maybe even just like tweaking your headlines so more people would click. Uh, and you can do that with like using uh, certain buzzwords. Um, I, another way to increase CTR would be to just think about your targeting. Maybe your targeting's way too niche. Uh, if sign up rate is what you're struggling with, then you want to think about maybe adding more value uh, to the content that you're providing, like maybe adding uh, a little bit more details um, or like maybe adding some, some screenshots of your app, for example. Uh, or you can play around with the layout, uh, think about like maybe adding different call to actions. I wouldn't do, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, overdo the call to actions though. Like if, if you have a page where there's like more than three buttons, it's, uh, it's too much. Uh, you can also think about changing the designs around a little bit. Um, and if purchase rate is what you're struggling with, then I think you need to do better expectation setting. Uh, so we have a rule at Blinkist where uh, we don't wanna pitch our app um, for a use case where it wouldn't justify paying 80 euros a year for. And like basically, the rule is the more value we offer up front, the more likely people are to pay uh, a, a bigger amount for your app. Yeah, so you basically think of a few tests and then um, you relaunch campaigns and you try to conclude these tests and then you pause the campaigns again and then you come up with more tests. Basically, you just rinse and repeat until it works. Um, and just to reiterate, what happens when you make it work? Well, you can expect that your advertising spend is going to grow significantly and it, this is going to pay off. Uh, it's going to have bigger payoffs year after year. Uh, your marketing mix is gonna be a lot more versatile. It's gonna be a lot more resilient as well. Uh, you're going to generate a lot of brand awareness. Um, and I don't know, like for us, like for example, we started, we noticed that we started getting featured everywhere. Uh, and actually we, and that was not something that uh, we expected uh, initially, but yeah, like it's really, content marketing is really good PR for your product. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, you'll also end up broadening your target audience a lot more and you'll, you'll maybe be able to make your app a bigger household name than it was before. So that's it. Um, uh, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, there's going to be uh, a lot of time for questions. Um, you can either send me an email or um, I also uh, included a link to my copywriting course here. It's just theartofcontentmarketing.com uh, if you want to check that out. But yeah, I think we can go into questions. Right. Yeah, we've got a bit of time. So um, Carlos is asking, what's the cost for content marketing versus traditional channels? The cost? Um, okay. By traditional channels, Carlos, do you mean like Facebook or do you mean offline like TV? Um, he's not able to answer, but okay. um, we can. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I, I can, yeah. I can, um, let me see if that's him replying, but like, um, well, so the, the biggest cost really is just how much time you're going to invest in the beginning. So, um, whereas like with Facebook and Google, you could set up campaigns relatively easily. You're not going to be able to do that with, um, Alpine and Tabula. You're going to have to be patient. 
um, and you're going to need a, a little bit more resources just because it's so content focused. It's not just um, let's optimize the campaigns and it will work somehow. Uh, you really have to get your content right. Um, but in terms of how much, if you want to get started, um, like I think initial budget of like 10K um, will be enough. You can also like start with less. They have self-serve accounts as well, but with 10K, you get an account manager, which I highly recommend uh, because it's you really shouldn't assume that you know how to optimize a campaign just because you have experience with another channel. And Guy is asking, um, what about uh, reaching young people versus older demographics? How, how does this channel perform? Um, well, so uh, I, I like to think that younger people also read the news. <laughs> um, well, so uh, in our experience, um, because Blinkist is actually, it, it makes a lot more sense for, for older people to use Blinkist because it's quite expensive. And we're seeing that we're able to reach older people with, um, with Albrain and Tabula. But this doesn't mean that uh, there aren't young people uh, on these channels. Um, and I gave some examples earlier, like CNN, BBC, maybe older people tend to read, uh, tend to be the consumers of these websites, but we all, there's also like 10,000 other websites out there. Um, I'm, well, I'm not really 18, so I can't, I can't even think of a website that an 18 year old would frequent, but uh, basically as long as they read the news, you can, you can target them. Fabian Pierre, I think that's the, the, the legendary um, industry thought leader, Fabian Pierre from Smart News. Hello. Maybe he'll, he's asking, how will you, how do you rate the maturity of uh, Outbrain to Rula ad tech compared to a channel like Facebook? Um, yeah. um, so in terms of ad tech, I guess you mean like uh, how their algorithm works or with like ad sets, um, how mature is it? Um, so don't quote me on this. I hope, oh, actually this is being recorded. So I guess it's too late, but, um, I would say maybe they're five years behind Facebook. Uh, actually Outbrain has introduced a lot of new features lately. Um, and they're moving really fast. And as, as they merge, they're going to have even more resources. So they might catch up really fast, but I would say where Outbrain and Tabula are right now is where Facebook was five years ago. Got it. And um, well, yeah, I mean, pretty much anyone's behind Facebook right now. I'm, I'm surprised it's, it's uh, five years behind, but um, yeah, but I think did Dimitri had a follow up with your 10K. Is that um, per month or per campaign? Uh, so the 10K would just be like the initial flight. Um, so if you if you get in touch with Albrain and Tabula and you say, I'm willing to spend 10K, uh, uh, and I know that with this, um, I get some support from an account manager. That's enough. You can spend that over like a year if you want, or if you if you want to spend that over like two weeks, it's, it's totally fine. And, and someone's saying, what about, it's another cost question, you know, content marketing, marketing versus Facebook. I guess they're, they're thinking about, I guess something like per install or something like that. Is it comparable or is it higher or does it totally depend? Well, so I actually have this chart in the, yeah. in the, uh, in the presentation. The beginning. Right. Uh, yeah, so you can expect right. these metrics. Got it. So I would like to do some more Q and A, but we've, we've stacked up a load of different, uh, talks right now. Um, so what I would like to ask Sandra is, is there any chance you should have had a, a log into the app, which is, um, sent you an email. I hope so. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can uh, make your way over there and um, you know do a post um, APSUSAPathable.co or, or check in your email. I hope you had an invite from from them. Maybe you can drop into the um, the forum, uh, do up a post, and maybe then the people who haven't had time to answer their questions, we can do that um, maybe sort of in the forum and, and directly. Okay. Yeah. Would that be okay? Good. Yeah. Great. Yeah. All right. Next time we're going to leave an hour for this, I think, and uh, <laughs> we'll do a, more of a workshop. This is a bit of a taster, but uh, thanks for joining us, Sandra. Now I think, yeah, we have, uh, you know, you've done Berlin and now online and uh, hopefully, yeah, see you at, at, at the next one. I'm looking forward. All right. It's great seeing you, James, thanks. and great seeing okay. everyone else. So you're going to post in the forum, hopefully, and sorry to those who haven't had their questions answered. If you head over to the forum and hopefully engage directly there. Yep. 
Okay. All right. Great. All right. Thanks. Bye, everyone.